I feel like we don't talk about Pokemon Colosseum enough on its own merits. Through all the drama regarding Sword and Shield's visuals, Colosseum and XD were frequently used as a way of tearing down the brief animations and sparse areas in the newer games. But the thing is, they're each different circumstances with different priorities. Nobody's lazy or doesn't care. Rather, Game Freak as a studio was late to 3D development, and so with annual turnarounds, their learning experience has been very public. They want to make open world titles, so we've seen the process, starting in Sword and Shield, continuing in Legends Arceus, and culminating in Scarlet and Violet. It's a big focus for the team, and with each and every step, Nothing is wasted. But that's why I think Colosseum and its developers at Genius Sonority were valuable. Regardless of what Game Freak's priorities or production process was like, they could do their own thing, bringing new specialities, aesthetics and ideas. Between the releases of the GBA and DS main titles, they released two GameCube RPG adventures with an entirely different focus. They were linear, there was no torn grass, there were no side activities, and yet... I absolutely loved them. We all know how things went in the end. Not only were Colosseum and its sequel, XD Gale of Darkness, critically panned, but for Pokemon games, they weren't really commercially impressive. If there were plans to have Genius Sonority continue to produce a parallel line of RPGs alongside the main series, then those were scrapped. But I do kind of want to live in this other universe where Game Freak isn't the only one making these kind of games. Because Colosseum is weird. Besides being the first 3D Pokemon adventure, the developers intentionally made it feel somewhat offbeat. While other spin-off games have adhered more to the visual design established by Ken Sugimori, the developers at Genius Sonority assembled under the leadership of Shinichi Hiromoto, a Star Wars obsessed manga artist who was known for his striking and often grotesque art, his most popular work being Hell's Angels, adapted into a 2008 Madhouse film. Compared to Sugimori, who was more into the cuter side of manga, they couldn't have found a more different art director. Of course, it was still a Pokemon game being released by Nintendo, so it wasn't like he turned Pikachu into a rotting corpse or anything. Instead, in his words, he balanced his respect for the Pokemon brand with his impulse to destroy it. Pokemon Coliseum was the debut title for Genius Sonority, a development team assembled by creators from across the industry, with the most, including the game's director, Manabu Yamana, coming from the Dragon Quest series. They were familiar with RPGs, but not the Pokemon series, and so they kind of had to learn on the job. And personally, I reckon that was a good thing. They weren't precious about the worldview of the series, or maintaining the things that fans were expecting, so we were treated to some Something different instead. Shinichi Hiromoto, being the Star Wars fan he is, wanted a decrepit desert region. So he got one, and even though it doesn't really fit the world of Pokemon as we know it, that mismatch became an appeal in itself. Darkness has fallen over the land of Ore. I think we can sometimes get too worried about what suits a franchise, while ignoring how much fun it is to have something that doesn't fit at all. I still remember playing through that whole sequence in the under for the first time, where you have to work alongside the kid's grid to overthrow its mayor. That weirdly uncomfortable feeling where everyone's against you just wasn't something I was used to from the Game Freak titles. Sure, a world struggling to survive, the rich and powerful exploiting the poor and weak, and a mega corporation conducting unethical experiments aren't concepts foreign to Pokemon today, but they've never been this much of a focus. Colosseum's director mentioned that it felt like he was making a movie, and that fits. The main series has always been about having two or three concurrent plots, one for your gym battle adventures, one for battling against an evil foe, and one for a side activity like contests. But Colosseum is streamlined. Everything from its gameplay to its art design to its towns are there for the singular purpose of telling a story about overthrowing Cypher. Even when its sequel, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, added 
wild Pokemon battles, it was more of a distraction than a sign of a more open world adventure on the horizon. This was a big part of reviewers' problem with the game at the time. Instead of seeing it as a more focused adventure, they saw it as lacking features. And while I also wouldn't want Genius' titles to replace the main series, it works in parallel, and I think it still could. At the time, the protagonist Wes was an 8 year old's idea of what's cool, and I was that 8 year old. The idea of playing as a former bad guy capable of stealing other people's quote unquote shadow Pokemon was awesome. Walking into a room to see Myra B dancing with the Ludicolos was fun as hell. And the fact that you blow up your team's base at the start of the game and then come back at the end just to kick them down again was, to both an 8 year old and 26 year old me, the coolest thing ever. And that's not to forget about XD, which, while having a more traditional younger protagonist and opening chapter, also has Lugia stealing a ship, a team up with Team Snagum, and the entire Citadark Island sequence that truly feels like you're storming the enemy lair. Some things might not be as cool as they once were to my primary school self, but it's still exciting just due to how wildly different both Colosseum and XD are from the rest of the series. And that's the point. I want to see Pokemon in a different light, and I think that can only really happen by giving new creative talents the keys to the kingdom and seeing what happens. It's worked with the web anime shorts, with the episode directors of Generations, Evolutions and Poketoons each delivering a different kind of tone and aesthetic for the franchise franchise, and I think that can work for the games as well. In the end, it kind of comes down to priorities. For example, a lot has been made of Colosseum's elaborate animations, and they are fantastic, with a big focus on detailed effects and weighty reactions. When a Pokemon gets hurt, you see it, and when they go down, it can feel a little tragic. Since there were going to be players who would only be interested in the battle mode, the creative team saw this as a big priority. They felt that if players were going to bother to connect their Game Boys up to their GameCubes, then the on-screen battles needed to be worth it. But a decade and a half later, when Game Freak eventually made their own console 3D RPGs, people were quick to compare, making out that Game Freak were lazy and Genius Sonority were well, geniuses. But the truth is that every part of 3D Pokemon animation or modeling within almost every Pokemon game or Smash Brothers title since 1998 has been either created at or supervised by one company. Creatures. Sure, Genius Sonority and Game Freak made the rest of their respective games, but it's Creatures that makes the Pokemon assets themselves. The difference is, as I said before, priorities. Genius Sonority wanted to continue the legacy of the stadium games by having dramatic animations for the Pokemon, and so they asked Creatures to do just that. That's why plenty of stadium animations turn up in Colosseum. Likewise, when Game Freak were making the step to 3D with X and Y, they wanted to keep the feeling of their current battle system, which focused more on brief and efficient attacks, and so Creatures made new animations that did just that. It's not perfect, not even close, but I don't think the animations in Genius's titles were ideal either. Colosseum and XD have so many random trainer battles that the animations can start to feel tedious at times, but what I do value is that both exist. Two separate creative directions that each have their own pros and cons. In a way, it's actually something I appreciate about the Digimon franchise. Despite Bandai Namco making it difficult for them to greenlight big projects, Digimon games are split across many different studios and creators, each with their own idea for what Digimon should be. Cyber Sleuth and Survive are both RPGs, but they also couldn't be more different. And once upon a time, Pokemon was the same. While Colosseum and XD were the first spin-off RPGs, they weren't the last. On handhelds, they handed off the franchise to Spike Chunsoft for the Mystery Dungeon series, HAL Lab for the Pokemon Ranger series, and my favourite, to Koei Tecmo for Pokemon Conquest. Pokemon Conquest, you can battle like never before. Playable on 
Nintendo DS and 3DS systems. Rated E for everyone. This Nobunaga's Ambition crossover was particularly fun, because, like with the Genius Sonority games, we got to see new artists outside of the regular Pokemon cycle take a crack at creating new Pokemon characters. In this case, it was Asami Yamamoto who we have to thank for this image of Nobunaga riding her Dragon, or this version of Date Masamune dressed as a Braviary. Plus, it's a strategy RPG. It takes hints from the Pokemon series, but it's an entirely new way of battling, and the progression is brilliant with not just your Pokemon evolving, but your Warlords as well. Look, you can give Motochika Samurott Spikes. I should clarify that Pokemon has been given to other developers more recently. Both Pokken Tournament and New Pokemon Snap were developed at Bandai Namco, and Ilka handled the remake of Diamond and Pearl. But neither really took the franchise in a new direction in the same way that Genius Sonority or Koei Tecmo did. Pokken Tournament doesn't feature a scene where Charizard throws his son off a cliff for instance. Pokemon is best when it's a bit weird. When a bad guy just decides to punch someone instead of battle. When a scientist reckons getting inside a Groudon mech makes them a better trainer. When Sengoku period warlords start cosplaying as their best friends. These games did alright commercially, but never as well as Stadium and nowhere near as well as the main series. After wrapping on Colosseum and XD, Genius Sonority went on to make the Stadium successor Pokemon Battle Revolution for the Wii, and today, they make mobile puzzle games like Shuffle and Cafe Mix. There just aren't any Pokemon RPG spin-offs anymore. The closest we've gotten in the last five years was a remake of the first Mystery Dungeon. But I just can't help thinking about that parallel universe where people loved those adventures through Ore as much as I did and still do. The Game Freak titles continue to be great, but that's a team dedicated to creating one specific kind of game. And that isn't a linear narrative adventure set in a world designed by an offbeat manga artist, nor are they unique crossover with other RPG franchises. But even if the Pokemon company aren't going to get on the phone and get new Pokemon RPGs greenlit, the least they can do is bring the genius sonority ones to the Switch. The encounters can get a bit tedious, and some of the character models have aged poorly, but as games, I reckon they still hold up, and are absolutely still worth playing. And while they're at it, Pokemon Conquest deserves a rescue port as well. So basically, I guess the takeaway for this video is just, hey Pokemon, please put these games on the Switch. Thanks for watching the Canapa FX, and thanks for helping me build a platform where I can turn my Pokemon hot takes into monetizable content. With that in mind, I'd like to thank these incredible people for supporting the channel. In particular, I'd like to thank Alan Baccaro, Austin Hardwick, Biopower, Chris Boylan, Dedemeet, Eddie Leheka, Faux Wizard, Frizzy Canadian, Frog Kun, Fujay, Jacob Bosley, JR Pictures, Mike Tamborelli, My Own Mother, Ryland Taylor, Studioy, Tomer Aman, and Tiago Nesimentu. If you want to see more videos like this, or perhaps one on Cyberpunk, then please visit patreon.com slash thecanoperaffect.